Okay, I'm in the Ganja Gorge. This hike starts at 2,200 meters in Gansu, just uh, about an hour south of Labrong, and uh, we're right close to the Qinghai Gansu border. And uh, this hike can be an hour if you want to just stay flat and stay at 3,200 meters. The first couple of kilometers is relatively flat, but then it goes up quite a bit. It's uh, steep, but we're quite walkable, and the very top of the mountain is 4,000 meters, which comes out of the grass there. We have stopped at this high pass at 3,643 meters and uh, behind us is this uh, basically an altar which the uh, local Tibetans give a fire offering to the local mountain deities on. Uh, Tibetans will come up to this place and throw wind horses or white pieces of paper called longta into the air and yell victory to the gods as they uh, worship the local deities here.
Here at the start of the hike, it starts with a little boardwalk walk for just the first 200 meters and then becomes real nature dirt trail, which is nice. Behind me is a local Buddhist meditation cave. Okay, so we're hiking Ganja Gorge in the winter. It is middle February. It's probably around negative 10 to negative 15 Celsius. It's cold. You can see I got my puffy jacket on. It's cold, but the sun is bright. There's a little bit of snow on the trail, but because the Tibetan Plateau is so dry, uh, most hikes you're gonna do, even in the winter, the air is gonna be cold, but there's not gonna be too much snow on the ground. You can see right here we're at 3,300 meters, just about, maybe 30% through our hike. And uh, the trail is pretty clear, so it's not very icy. I'd say very safe. We're actually walking on a horse trail where nomads go up to the top of the mountain in the summer. And uh, they, this is basically their only access route to the high mountains. So of course, the nomads are in lower elevations now in the winter because there's no grass on the tops of the mountains. Okay, we're crossing the icy river here. Slipping along, slipping. You can see the cliffs behind me. These cliffs have about a 500 to 700 meter vertical elevation gain. Uh, this would be a rock climber's paradise. I don't think any of these things have ever been climbed or bolted. So uh, if you're looking into pioneering a new rock climbing route, this would be the place. But uh, for the hikers like me and most of the people that are gonna come here, we're just gonna walk along this hiking trail. It's fairly flat for the first couple of kilometers because it follows the river. Then it turns right and goes up the hill. Come July and August, this will turn into a beautiful alpine meadowland that is lush and wonderful and green. And uh, the Tibetan shepherds will bring up thousands of yaks and thousands of sheep using this trail. That cave actually, in that cave, was found an 8,000 year old 
tooth and it was a pretty crazy story there was a old monk meditating in that cave and uh, as he was meditating there for several months he was probably moving around the cave and happened to find an 8,000 year old tooth of course he didn't know it was 8,000 years old at that time but he knew it was a human tooth he gave it to the leader of his monastery the local monastery Labrong monastery and from there the, that leader of that monastery gave it to a scientist on Lanzhou it got then passed on to a museum in Britain where it is today so the oldest tooth in the world was actually found right here as a monk was meditating pretty crazy stuff